I was watching a front end developer react to CSS code. So I thought, hey, how about as a full stack developer, I react to some awesome JavaScript code pens. So I came across this Kevin Powell video and he is talking about CSS and he's taking a look at some mind blowing stuff that inspired me. And I was like, hey, how about we take a look at some incredible JavaScript projects that are done mostly with JavaScript and we just take a look at them and maybe have a mind blowing experience together. So let's jump right into it. So here we have a connect for game and it's built using mostly JavaScript. So if you take a look here, there's a lot going on in this game, tons of it. If I went through every single line of this, that would take a really long time. But taking a look at this, we have a couple of things happening here. Like if I am looking at this game, like look at this, right? First of all, so much is happening. Whichever column I'm on top of, that circle shows up right there. And that column gets highlighted. That's incredible, right? and let me click and then it drops. So there's a lot of like animation stuff going on here. So we'll take a look at the styling for this as well. The HTML seems to be quite simple. It's very, very basic here. Just about 70 to 80 lines of HTML code. Not much going on on the HTML side. There's quite a lot going on on the CSS side as well. About 200 lines happening here. And I believe these keyframes are what are making that animation happen when I click. So for example, let's comment. Uh, let's take those out. It's read only. How can I edit this? Let's fork it. Okay. I forked it. Start a game and let's see if we can comment it out. Beautiful. So now it's commented out. When I click it, it, it doesn't really know how to behave. If I comment all of that out, that's adding the bounce. Actually, let's try that again. Boom. So the bounce is happening with these, uh, with these animations here. So let's see if we can add the bounce back in now. Boom. That bounces there. That's really nice. How we have the bounce happening here. Hover pointer. Okay. Let's take a look now at the JavaScript side. I think that's the side that's, um, I mean, both sides are really interesting here, but I also want to take a look at the JavaScript side quite a bit. So on this side, we also have a worker here okay, and that worker has our game logic all inside of this. So our index.js is making sure it's grabbing our worker. And then based off of that, it's going. So the logic is also important. And then how we're able to do all of this stuff happening on the DOM that's we're also doing that with JavaScript as well. Okay, so I'm curious. Let's see how the row is being column is being highlighted. So we have this function called create cursor chip wherever we pass at the index. That's where the cursor gets created. So for example, if I hover over here, that chip gets created right on top of this also right on top of this column. That's this function create cursor chip. So let's find that create cursor chip takes in which player. So if it's player two, it's going to be purple. If it's player one, it's going to be that turquoise color, green color, pretty freaking cool project, heavy, heavy on JavaScript and logic, a lot of fun. Definitely give yourself a chance to work on something like this. But of course, there's a lot of CSS going on in here as well. Just even this one function here, create cursor chip, a lot of CSS, being able to retain all this memory, then draw those circles, then make sure those circles are actually being appended onto every other thing here. So really awesome project. I love it. Had a ton of fun taking a look at it. And now let's take a look at another JavaScript project. So this one is called the terrible cloth. The physics of this project is just completely out of this world. And that's what kind of blew me away. And I was like, yo, what is happening here? But check this out as I hover over it. Oh, shit. Like, look at how that moves. Let me refresh and go through it slowly. Absolutely beautiful. I click and I hold right? And if I right click, it cuts like this is just a thing of beauty. Now, I'm not saying as a job. JavaScript developer, this is what you're going to be doing. You have to be a physician to almost make this happen. There's a lot of physics going on here. So if I could like zoom out here, the code a little bit so you can see it, but there's tons of physics going on here and the accuracy of the physics, house influence, gravity, Jesus. I mean, space wise, spacing, tier distance. So yeah, that type of stuff. There's a lot of canvas drawing here and yes, tons of physics stuff that I see. Like I remember even when I was building a game called Pong, I had to actually apply 
a lot of physics that I learned in high school. That was a lot of fun to make. And I made the game with Python, I remember, and it, it required tons of physics. It was cool because I got to take physics that I learned in school and apply it to a actual coding thing. And it did real stuff. This project, freaking awesome, heavy on JavaScript. And just the way everything, like how bouncy it is, right? Even when I play FIFA, there's tons of physics in there. So when developers are working on things like that in games, they really have to go out of their way. I mean, if it's as satisfying to you as it is to me, like, wow. That's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. Look at that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, let's go to the next one. This is a JavaScript calculator and probably one of the sexiest calculator I've seen to date. Makes you want to use the calculator, to be honest. The only thing I wish that this app had is I wish it worked with me typing in my buttons on keyboard. It doesn't work with that. So here, if I do eight plus eight equals 16. I really like when I type in eight or seven. I like when I type in my numbers does that like little zoom zoom in effect where the number becomes bigger on the screen and the whole thing just has a very clean look like i even like how there's a little delay as i hover over that c or that seven or that eight gives it a nice little touch and even when i do plus right it has those words coming up like divided by plus minus times you you, <laughs> you broke it i love that <laughs> That's funny. Taking a look at the code here. Again, the HTML part of it looks really simple. This is class num, each number. Our operators have, we have a plus operator here, class is ops. So all the operators I believe are in our ops class. So it has a slightly different styling. I think it's because what happens here, you need access to all of that stuff so you can actually show it happening there. I'm curious, I really wanna know that eight, that eight, right? How does that become big? How does that expand? So I'm gonna actually check that out. Okay, so I like the comments here too, set num. So this is how the number is set, which is basically like, hey, I get the number, but when I click eight here, this is what sets the number. So this is when the number is clicked, get the current number selected. So, okay, I understand how we're getting the current number. Get attribute data num. Okay, so whatever I'm typing in there is being gotten. Display the current number. So I believe that's maybe there. <laughs> wow, I love that. So if you do eight divided by zero, it goes, you broke the universe or it goes, uh, look at what you've done and it goes reset universe. That's beautiful. <laughs> uh -huh, that's where it's coming from. So in CSS, the value fade ins that appear. And so they're happening right here and the content we're getting from data num. So for example, whatever content I have, that's in our data num. That is what I believe ends up showing right here. So this one really freaking beautiful. The front end is awesome. Love this uh, project, really good project. And oh, by the way, I'm, I just typed in JavaScript at the top on code pen and we're just checking out some of the projects there. So you could do that too. And then look at projects that have JavaScript in there. Okay, so let's take a look at something else that that's interesting. So we looked at three projects that's uh, so far that were pretty freaking cool. All right. So here's another one. And I really like this project. Actually, this is really fun. We have our chat built here and I can basically send a message so I can be like, hey, what is going on? And if I send this message, I get a reply back. Beautiful. All of this is happening without any back end. This is just with front end. And what's happening is we have our JavaScript code right here and our JavaScript code. Basically, we have an array of random messages messages, those random messages are coming out, right? Why did the web developer leave the restaurant because of the table layout? And that's this joke right here. And that's just being randomly displayed. That's good so far. And then the rest of it is heavy on CSS. There's a lot of styling going on here, right? So you have to know how to be able to make a layout like this using HTML, CSS. You can use frameworks, you could use grid for this, or you could use Flexbox and to know, okay, how are we getting a chat box that looks like this? And now my front end skills are not the best as you guys have seen some of my videos. <laughs> Right, my back end skills are probably a lot better than my front end skills. But all of this is happening front end. We're sending a message and then we have a piece of JavaScript that essentially waits and then, you know, I, I assume it's this set timeout. And then we append that to the list of the messages and then we boom, send that message. But it's fancy because 
of even how we get the message, right? When Vincent responds, it's in green. It's on the left hand side. It has a timestamp, right? And what's cool is that it's also pulling the current timestamp. The timestamp is also styled. That's freaking cool. It's every response, we get it about one and a half second later, I believe. That's what that 1500 right there probably means. We're able to scroll this thing. That's also really cool. And all of this is pure, pure JavaScript and CSS. So not even libraries or anything like that being used. So beautiful project, really, really awesome. I really like it. How we have this showing up here, we can search. Oh crap, the search works. Yo, what? That's awesome. They're not, I don't even think they're using React here. I don't think so. Any React here? Let's look. Nope. We're just using font. Awesome. Well, that's for CSS. jQuery, handlebars. But yeah, definitely not using React here. So really cool project. Really, really awesome project actually to look at. Chat widget. So that's it. I hope you guys had fun with this video. I hope you got to learn something out of it, or at least you just had fun. Look, if you enjoy content like this, what I recommend you check out is I had a CSS battle with my boy Nas. Maybe you want to see who won. Maybe you see, you want to see how it went. So what I recommend you to do is go ahead and click that video and go watch that video right now. You're going to have a ton of fun. You're going to enjoy it. With that said, I love your beautiful face. If you enjoyed the video, smash the like button so this video goes out everywhere. This is your boy Kazi. I love your beautiful face and I'll see you in the next video. Go click that video while I juggle these lemons. I freaked out at the end because I realized I had a cup of coffee right here. And if it splashed onto it, it would destroy my entire studio. Why are you still here? Go watch the other video. I love your beautiful face. I'll see you next time. Bye.